So it is officially starting now or not? I'm not. Well, I'm just starting the recording. If you're going to have a discussion. Oh. Yeah. So am I going to? I'm not going. I'm not going to officially call the meeting to order until we have a quorum. Um, Tony, you know, my apologies to you. It's just one of those nights. So why don't we just have a conversation and then when we have six people, I'll officially start the meeting. How's that? Um, can we let David and Christy know that, you know, we're kind of waiting on them? Sure. They I will realize it's, it's critical that they- um, Yeah, that because they otherwise, them. you know, I had them in another meeting. I'm not going to because of this. So oh, okay. for this not to happen. Yeah, no, I mean, they said they were both getting at 730. I'll just let them know. Okay, just, you know. So they don't think like, oh, well, you know, whatever, you know. Um, so anyway, the other day I was at the library and I think actually Mandy might have texted while I was there about how about the library. And so I went, first of all, there's a great wall right in front of the library. Um, and I went and spoke to Jennifer O'Neill, who's the director, and she was like, oh my God, let's, let me go, let's go look at the wall, yes. And she was very excited about it. Um, so then I, I guess I let Marina, who's on the Arts Council, know about it. And she and Melinda Buey, who is the artist, mm -hmm. talked about it and they, they've come up with this idea of instead of having it painted on the wall, they wanna have it on a, they want a digital, digitalized painting on sailcloth or canvas that would then be hung on the wall. Okay. And they said that it wouldn't be, um, would be hooks that wouldn't damage the wall. I don't know. She said command strips. I can't imagine what kind of command strips you're going to put on that would hold up. And they 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 gave the dimensions that they're thinking of as five by eight feet. I, I mean, eight feet high. There's a Christy yeah, as an attendee. Is that Christy Young? By any chance? Oh, Christy Young. Yeah, she's yeah. on the committee. Yeah, okay. great. Is Christy? Uh, I'll. I'll uh, we'll the panels. Yes, we just need one more. No, Christina is not Christy. Wait. Oh, it's not. Okay. I I didn't know. Okay. Sorry. That might be a member of the public, possibly. Um, well, they, they'll uh they should be able to pop back in if if they're looking to reform. Okay. Okay. Um actually I don't know who you are, Tony. I'm not sure. Oh my pa okay. So Tony Gilber is the um is a resident of the Maranek and he is the chair of the flood mitigation committee. Oh, okay. So Great. He's joining Great. us tonight to um, you know, we're trying to partner more with the flood mitigation committee. Right, right, right. He's going to be talking about an idea that she and Tony have hatched, which is uh quite impressive and quite ambitious. And we will be hearing about that in a little right. bit. I did read about it. I just didn't put the name together. Okay. Anyway, so right. the the uh, the mural thing is going to be yeah. They they were saying eight feet tall by five feet wide. The, I measured the wall today. It's nine feet by eight inches. So it seems to me it could be a little bit bigger. Um, and um, the librarian is going to present it to her board tomorrow night. Um, see what they think of it. Isn't it David, his wife is on the board, right? Yeah. Right. And, and we've, and Mandy, we've made him aware of this. Oh, cool. <laughs> no, no, we, we made him aware. So that's fine. You know, so initially, I think um, Debbie located the site, which is amazing because we know that they do programming and that they have this pollinated garden and it's obviously a trafficked site. And they were enthusiastic about it, but then I guess, I mean, I mean, Debbie, just, you know, I'm just filling in the blanks here that Marina felt that the wall was a little tricky because there's certain times of the day or on certain days where there's a lot of shadow that's cast on the wall. Yeah, I don't know what time of day she's talking about that. She took a picture, but I don't know what time of day that was. So, so the picture mm -hmm. she sent us, it was like almost like half the wall was in a shadow and right. half wasn't. So she felt like that may not be great for photography purposes. 
you know, so we, we've been we've been sort of going back and forth between having sort of a permanent installation painted on a building versus having this sort of roving thing that you could, you know, move around. And um, I, I don't know. So I guess that's where your input would really be um, would be really useful to hear what you guys think. Um, I like the wall. I know which one it is. It's right near the entrance doors, but it might be dark because it is angled the other way. So I don't know. But um, did anyone find out if that little grass area belongs to the library that they just recently like put a bench in grass? It's like below the library. Like when you're looking head on at the library to the left, there's a wall, like a brick wall, and the patch of grass that someone just recently cleaned up. I, I that wall's that, not the library. That's not the library wall. That doesn't belong to them? No. Well, the, the wall you're talking about is, is I. No, I, not that one. You don't mean the brick wall. You mean, it, but it, the thing is, by that patch of grass, yeah. the wall below that entrance terrace of the library. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not, it's, it's actually stone. It's faced in stone. I know. It's not like really a good surface for. No. Um, right. We walked her, she and I walked around the whole life. Well, not, we didn't uh, walk behind the library, but we walked around and there's no other wall. That's the only smooth okay. wall. Yeah. Right. So I, I told Debbie that um, I somehow came upon this, um, this webinar that I was watching and it's called the Migrating Monarch Murals. Mm, I looked at that site. The Inkwell, right? Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because they really do like full, you know, full sides of buildings, you know, and it's it's really cool. And so I, I would love the idea we're creating this pollinator, you know, butterfly habitat at Rockland Pocket, like that building that was facing it. Right. But that's right. a private building. Um, we need to get whoever that owner is. <laughs> but like that would be so cool because it's facing what we hope yeah, is the, yeah. the habitat. I mean, and it just sort of thematically all goes together. Um, but I think as a starter, you know, we have an artist who's willing to do this for free. I think we need to right. uh, basically pay for whatever costs are involved in creating this. You know, the right, they're, they're gonna, um, they're, they're gonna um, price, they're pricing it out now. That's what they're doing right. now. So there's no reason not to do at least something like that, I guess. I agree. But, the library yeah. is just like an easy, like foot traffic place. You know, I mean, it's yeah. silly not to do it there. Yeah. I mean, but, I would, um, well, I, I've mostly been there in the afternoon and the wall is not, um, it's, it's not shadowed when I've been there. So. Well, just for the board, uh, so uh, Christina is back and I see Dennis Drogan, who's our assistant building inspector. Is oh, also an attendant. Does Dennis usually attend, or he sometimes he might come. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you like me to vote him, promote him to panelist at the least, so he can? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. sure. Whatever. Yeah. Oh God, how can we? We got to get this meeting started, though. This is making me crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um. The other. I thing think I it's did... great, Debbie. <laughs> I'm okay. excited. Yeah, I no, really. I'm I think I'm it's excited cool. too. Because I also, I did write to the Life Church who do own, or now they've bought the old CVS building. Mm -hmm. um, oh. But I hadn't heard back from them because that's a really nice wall too. And that's right in the middle of town. The one uh, that, the one that faces right onto the avenue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's nice a big smooth wall. wall. And, that's going to um, become a church? Yeah. It's the Life Church. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the Life they picked up the property uh, probably two or three years ago after, uh, the CVS relocated. Yeah, they've been uh, rehabbing that place for the better part of a year, two years, I think. Yeah, yeah the, the, I spoke to the contractor guy and he said that uh, they'll probably be in in October. So, but nobody heard, I didn't hear back from them. So I, I can follow up again with them to see. Whoops, Tony disappeared. I'm still here. I just, here I'm did. trying to look for something and I don't want you to think I'm not paying attention. <laughs> That's quite all right. Um, hi, Dennis. Just want to welcome you to the meeting. How are you? Um, I'm just here to just sit in and, and listen. Um, but if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to ask. Buildings. Well, we I, can I put think them that at some point, soon, um, at some point soon, Dennis, we're going to want to set up 
um, a CSA task force meeting, which is different than this meeting. And that's where you'll sort of, um, you know, be more uh, ask the tougher questions. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about an update of what we're doing in that arena, um, but sort of just in a very, you know, sort of a very summary way. But, um, that's not the main focus of this meeting, but we're happy to have you at this meeting and every meeting. So thank you for joining us. Um, and just so you know, we're waiting um, for two more of our members so that we have a quorum that we could officially begin the meeting. So right now we're just mm. talking about stuff going on. Um, the other thing I guess I'll update you ladies on is Mandy and I, um, I guess uh, somebody from the Pollinated Pathway Group reached out to Mandy um, to have a tri-municipal um, event in the fall. And we were separately talking about having our own event. And then we realized, you know, it's probably better to collaborate versus just doing something on our own. You know, it's just easier to publicize and get more people. And, you know, why not? We're all sort of moving in the same direction here. So we're going to have a kickoff meeting on Monday for that. Um, Ellen, do you know, actually, because I just went back because I, I couldn't remember exactly what committee she's with, and I knew it was something more than pollinator pathways. Okay. She's the chair for Larchmont Parks and Trees. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. I have not dealt with people from that committee. Okay. So that's what she is. I knew she wasn't just pollinator pathway because she said that they invited and healthy yards and pollinator pathway will be there. But oh, that okay. was so anyway. Good. Good. What's good. the name of this person? Uh, Glenna, uh, I have her Facebook. She found me on Facebook. I think she's in our Facebook group. Um, she just wrote me. I don't even think she knew I was on the committee. She just was talking about plants and she knows that I run the group. So, um, but who knows? It'd be fun. Yeah, it's great. Ooh. And, um, Sean, I think what else I could just... Oh, wait, one second. Um, the wheel abrader, is that something you can, oh, I mean, yes, anything here that doesn't involve a vote? No. So, moment. yeah, so we're having, um, I've arranged a tour on Friday morning, and that's the, um, the incinerator in Peekskill. And there's been a lot of controversy because... Um, it's been postponed this Friday. It had, no. Yeah. What, why are you saying that? The wheel abrader is postponed. I got an I, email. I did it's not get that memo. It's postponed till um, July 8th. Really? Yeah. I have to check my calendar now. Um, yeah, I, have, I got a wheel. Can you send me that email? Because I had no idea I was going to go there on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's July 8th. Where are you uh, seeing that, Debbie? Uh, Marissa Rodriguez. I got an email from her a couple of days, it's a while ago. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Wait a second, wheel a tour. <laughs> Marissa Rodriguez. Is she sending it to our um, Village of Marinac email or the other one? Your the personal? regular, regular one. Um, wait, that's not I don't have anything Marissa. <laughs> Oh, wait, Rodriguez. I'm looking because I have a more recent one for her because I emailed her because when I went to uh, yeah I mean if you could send that to me ASAP because I'm dealing with like 15 people with this thing right well there was supposed to be a thing about um, a, a, a thing to watch beforehand, which was at the same time as this meeting. Did you get that email? No, I haven't gotten that. All right, I have to find the email because I don't know. How, sometimes I can't find it, but I, 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 it's definitely canceled. I yeah. wonder if that went to my spam. Mm. I don't know why I can't find it so easy. Why aren't these other things coming up? Oh, here they are. Well, I'm glad we're talking about this because I was literally going to go on Friday morning. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so anyway. Yeah. I'll send, I, there's I um, 
there is a movement to shut down the incinerator that, that you know, it's, it's bad for the air, bad for people's health. Um, there's a film called The Sacrifice Zone. It's a, a documentary about the incinerator in Newark, New Jersey, and the horrible rates of, you know, asthma and cancer and all this horrible stuff, you know, that people are suffering in that area. And there, so there's a similar movement now starting at the, you know, for the peak skill. And some people say, well, it's, it's beneficial because it helps, you know, it adds to the energy grid. So when the garbage gets burned, it's adding, it's, you know, giving back to the energy grid. And, pe and then uh, people think that that's just um, a talking point and really not valid. So it used to be that anybody could visit the real operator. It was like, you know, come on in. And now because of this controversy, it's very hard to get these appointments. Um, they're being very circumspect about, you know, who's coming, what's the group. And it's all very highly organized, which is why it's very weird that I didn't see an email that got canceled. Yeah, it says, uh, doesn't say, it says due to delayed, and it's in quotes, delayed outage that I learned about this afternoon. They've given us an alternate date of July 8th. All and right, they're right. also, and the, um, I will change the date in Eventbrite and continue to send blah, blah, blah. But they're also, and she also said something about changing the, the time of this thing that she sent for us to watch beforehand. That was at this time. It's probably um, the second film, which I've already seen. Yeah, I mean, I saw that film. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's what it's called. It's called The Sacrifice Song. Yeah, I don't know if it was. I don't even know where that is. It's like, I can't keep, I can't figure out these emails. Anyway. Right, so it's you mean folders, Debbie? What? Debbie, do you make folders in Outlook? That's what I do. I have folders. No, I don't have my my Gmail is not in Outlook. It's in some of Gmail. It's in Gmail. I don't know what. Oh, it's in your Gmail. Gmail. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have folders. I mean, I do, but I don't put things in them. That's the problem. Uh, my my filing system in real life is not good or digitally. <laughs> I'm very behind with digital, but I do try to use the folders because I can never find email. And now it's like Gmail, VOM email. Right. Yeah, I should do that. Set up folders. Anyway. Um, Dennis, I have you. Dennis? Yeah, sorry, I lost you. What was that? I'm sorry, while we have you, we're jumping around because we're just waiting for two more committee members so we have a quorum and we can officially start our meeting. But I'm just thinking while we have you, I'm just wondering um, if you've had a chance to look at the New York stretch code. Yes, I, I have. And I've, I've worked with the New York stretch code already. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of it. I'm aware of the capacity that the building department will have to implement. The, the stretch code versus the typical energy, the regular energy code that we have. Uh, so there would be a there would be necessary re-education um, for some of the staff that's not familiar with it. Um, but Frank has worked with um, the New York stretch and he has taken some of the um, online classes. Um, so uh, we had a meeting with Matt, I forget his last name. He's one of the, uh, uh, the teachers that will help implement it to the village. Um, so, and I know Jerry has been in contact with them as well. So there is, there's communication um, from our department with them and vice versa. So um, we're just waiting for the trigger um, on when this will all happen. So it sounds like you guys are supportive. Yeah, I, I feel that the village manager is supportive. I, I'm definitely supportive of it. Um, you know, we just have to wait for the, the, the channels that be to, to get it to us where it's okay. fully right. implemented. That is um, something that we really want to do um, because we think it's the right thing to do and it really helps elevate us in some of these New York State programs that lead towards, you know, grant money and so forth. But we feel like it's, it's sort of eventually going to be the code. So why not? adopted and the town has adopted it, the town of Maranek. And, um, you know, so many people that build in the town, build in the village. So it just feels like the right thing to do. 
Uh, I think that was also Frank's comment originally when I, I discussed this with him, the stretch clue said, it, it, it's going to be the code at some point. So yeah. it doesn't, there's no downside to understanding it now. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the, the credits for that class um, count towards our um, necessary educational and energy credits. So um, yeah, but we've all taken them. The, um, and, and it's also going to be great for the building department as well. Um, so we would start asking for permits for windows. Irvington, Dobbs Ferry, they currently do that. They ask for a building permit to swap windows out to make sure that they are compliant to the energy code precisely. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, think it'll be, I think it'll work out great. Um, I think it'll work out great. Great. And have you had a chance I don't know if you've been asked to, so I'm just putting this out there um, with zero expectation, but have you had, had an opportunity to look at the uniform um, solar permit? The uniform solar permit to the New York State Building Code or an actual document? Yeah, so there's there's what's called the uniform, the uniform solar permit, which is um, a permitting process that is by definition, uniform, thereby making the process of putting solar on your roof more streamlined. Um, so I don't know what our process is now. I know I do see homes with signs that saying, you know, we're gonna be before the building department mm -hmm. to put solar on our roof. I know there has to be, there's still a process. I think this would streamline the process um, because basically if you meet whatever these, you know, requirements are, you could just put the solar on your roof. Um, so, yeah, they go to they go to the board of architectural review. It would just cut down the red tape. Yeah, so I mean, as of right now, the building department they they're pretty streamlined. So if solar permit comes in, an application comes in, uh, it is uh, reviewed by the administrative and clerical staff, then uh, sent right over to Barbara Ritter, who is uh, who kind of guides BA uh, board of architectural review, um, and then it goes right to a board meeting, and soon after. Uh, it goes in front of me. I, I do the plan review, and then it's out. So I would say it's no more than five weeks right now, which is which is very very quick compared to other municipalities, including Board of Architecture review. There is only two cases that I know of so far where it it's it's had to be reviewed by Board of Architectural review twice. That's it, just twice. Uh, there is one currently that's going on. It's like seventy two panels on Orienta that has a couple of red flags. Um, so that may make a third meeting. Uh, the meetings are 18 days apart. So, you know, 18, 16 days apart. Um, so that that may be at the three month mark at the most, um, but it's the contractor not communicating with the building department for the indeficiencies of their system. So it's not because there's something unique about the home that you need to really get involved with, like if it's a historical home. No, not at this point. The, the, that home is a very modern home on Orienta. Um, they're just overloading the capacity of the home. They're, they're going above 100% oh. of, the, um, of what's needed. And they have the panels in front of the house facing every which direction. Um, to quote VAR, it looks like a space station. Yeah, I know that house. It's interesting. It's one of the first homes. And now there's a second home um, on Claflin, which is my street. It's the first time I'm seeing the panels on the front of the house. I thought that was interesting. Dennis, is it fair to say that um, you know usually it's the it's the solar installers who are guiding the application process, and they kind of know what every community is doing? Yes. Um, yeah, they they do. I mean, we don't have any restrictions on putting solar panels in front of the house. Uh, a lot of people would like that, um, but you know what the efficiency level is to you know what what's needed for the house to have uh, you know zero outside use. So that's the goal. Um, yeah. But I was, uh, yeah. I, I was just trying to make the point. I think probably in ninety nine percent of the applications, it's going to be the the solar company who's doing the majority of the legwork. The the homeowner typically, you know, is there just to you know. Because they're they want the home, but it's usually yeah. the company that uh, drives the process. Right, right. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, before the before the meeting starts, so you were talking about the incinerator up in Peekskill that provides yeah. us a 
good amount of energy for Westchester. So there are there are scrubbers on the incinerator. Um, there's also um, a magnet system to catch any uh, metal particles. There's a, there's a lot to it. So it's not just a straight out incinerator, but I'm, I'm sure you you folks know that. Well, I really I honestly know not very much at all. So I was just going sort of, you know, to get some education about it. Yeah, me um, too. So I'm not against the incinerator per se. I mean, what's the alternative? A landfill? I mean, I don't know what's, what, you know, it's the lesser of two evils. We have a lot of trash in our society and it's got to go somewhere. I mean, I try to encourage, you know, people to recycle and compost and do all those things, but there's still trash. Right. Still can, I just, can I just can I just interrupt for a second? Um, you know, David sent an email saying he wouldn't be able to join until eight. This was a what? Because I, I was checking. Because when you said seven thirty, I remember reading. His, it says eight o'clock. Oh, it's mm -hmm. eight. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know what to say, guys. Um, well, what else can we? What else can we cover here? That's you know, uh, non votable A forum, no mo may. We can talk about that. We can talk about our butterfly habitat. I don't know what the rules are exactly. <clears throat> well, I'm just sort of annoyed because I'm not going to another meeting because I'm coming to this meeting. So, right. So, can I can I make a suggestion? Yes. I'm not even on the agenda. So, can you let me in as kind of a member of the public, and um, I could talk about um, a little bit about the Army Corps project, and then they've been using this term called tweaking. And I think that the idea of kind of uh, for the parking lot in, in uh, Columbus Park, tweaking, it might fit under the tweaking regime. The other thing I wanted to just touch base on, and I know you and Ellen know and Kate knows, I did submit that grant and I'm gonna, I don't know how I'm gonna get the matching funds. So I haven't even had time to think about that yet. That's not true. I, when we did the river cleanup, did I tell you this? Um, I found a, an unopened bottle of beer, a chair, and you know what those those little, uh, this, you know, when you're going down a neighborhood and they have kids and there's a the green little person that says, watch out for my children. Yeah. So I wanted to have an auction, an auction knows off, but I don't know. At any rate, so how about it's just let me, let me talk about the confluence and then uh, we'll move on. Okay, the floor is yours, Tony. Thank you. Floor is mine. Okay, so um, as you know, the Army Corps looked at our village in 2000. Oh my goodness, what 15, 16, 17, and they came up with a flood control plan. And I think everyone knows that you know it has its good points and its bad points. It's not perfect. Then we had Ida and. Um, between the politicians, all of them got 88 million promised because I think, you know, nothing is ever, uh, you know, you don't have it in your pocket till you have it in your pocket, but they've promised 88 million to do this thing again. And so after Ida, I put my application in to rejoin the flood committee because I felt I had really been spearheading a project that the, the last time I had said three things, the project had to be effective at flood control, it had to be aesthetically okay for the villagers, meaning we don't want high walls like they have in California, and C, had to be environmentally appropriate, right? So those were my three criteria. So we met, and you probably, some of you either attended or, or, or listened by Zoom to the Army Corps on the 18th of May, I think it was. At any rate, one of the things that they're proposing is that the confluence in Columbus Park where the Mamaroneck River joins the Sheldrake um, is a big restriction, right? And it's a restriction due to, I think, three things. One is the two rivers crash into each other, right? And what's called laminar flow becomes turbulent flow, which in itself is a big restriction. Then they, it makes two 90 degree turns, and then it goes under the railroad bridge and then under the Halstead Avenue Bridge. So, Ellen, I have the PowerPoint. Would you want me to put it up or just talk about it? Whatever works for you, Tony. 
Um, well, it's your meeting, so I don't want to, you know. Well, we're in limbo here, so if you can see that <laughs> your presentation. Then I've got some good help. maps if you want, Tony. Yeah. Um, I can share them on my screen. Um, um, you can yeah, but then. Uh, anyway, I don't know what you've got, but. Let, me, let me just see if I can find this, this PowerPoint. Here. Hang on. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. All right, great. That was easy. Okay, so anyway, we kind of know the river and the, and the village, obviously, but this is Columbus Park, and this is the Mamaroneck River coming in. The Sheldrake comes along here. This is the confluence. It then, uh, they crash into each other. The, the water then goes uh, under the Plaza Avenue Bridge, makes a left turn, and then hits the wall here and makes a right turn, goes under the railroad bridge, and then under the Halstead Avenue Bridge, and then down as the Mamaroneck River. So this is what we call the confluence. And it creates such a backup, as you probably well know, that we've had about nine feet of water from the uh, uh, ma uh, modern on the rails, kind of, you know, from nine feet to th two or three feet, all the way, you know, this whole area here, right? And a lot of it's due to this backup, right? So the water backs all the way up, floods First Street, it floods this whole area. Now the whole Sheldrake here, this 90 degree turn doesn't help at all. This 90 degree doesn't help at all. Um, at any rate, so this is a problem. And the Army Corps solution to that, So this is a couple of pictures of, this was, in fact, Irene. Of course, in Ida, the water was up over the bridges, the Plaza Avenue Bridge, the railroad being right here. Yeah, that's the railroad bridge. And then it also hits, this is Halstead Avenue. So the water's coming this way. It then hits this beam and also backs up. That's probably about eight feet of water. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. So those are the two arches, arches of the bridge. And this is that parking lot that we're talking about and the jefferson avenue bridge is back here and then the railroad bridge is right there but the river goes kind of this way and then this way so the army's corps proposal is to open up this uh parking lot put a tunnel under it probably a 20 foot by 10 foot something and then a tunnel under the on the I guess there's Plaza Street here, so that there's a direct flow, direct connection between the Mamaroneck River and the railroad bridge. So that's their proposal, and this would okay. go this so way. So if I can interject, the dimensions of the tunnel are 25 feet wide, 8 feet high, 390 feet long. Okay, thank you, Kate. What's in the parking lot now? What, who uses it? So that's a, a commuter parking lot, and seven years ago when I tried to say let's put an open stream there right put an open stream here so that's really my i don't know if it's my idea but it's i'll i'll take the credit and the blame for it so rather than putting this tunnel in so to save the parking make this an open stream right and in 2006, 15, 16, and 17 it was pretty full since covid it's not much it's not very full and um, one of our residents came up with the idea that they just built a new train parking place in Harrison, that some of the residents, we could probably make a deal and rent some spots up there. At any rate, so the thing would be to put, make this an open channel flow. So what I did was I compared this to, are you familiar with Larkin Plaza in Yonkers? So Debbie, you haven't. Okay. So, um, how about you, Mandy? No. no. Okay. So if you close your eyes and imagine this is the Yonkers Railroad Station, it's a beautiful old historic building, and you come up here and this is Broadway in Yonkers, and there was a, a row of dilapidated housing here, and then there was the Department of Motor Vehicles over here, and it was oh, a I big, know that. I know the motor it was a big, huge parking yeah. lot, right? And then supposedly there's an engineer who works out of, um, 
out of Majestic Kitchens who came up with the idea. It's called daylighting, right? And so from what I understand, that Larkin Plaza was designed, I'm not sure by whom, in the 20s, and the river, Sawmill River was put underground. So they came up with this solution. So they took a parking lot like this and they made this, this is what you see when you're down there, right? You see a little waterfall for the change in grade. They have a fish ladder. Let me just kill this phone. <laughs> this is that thing by, by the Yonkers um, DMV. Right. It used yeah, to be a parking lot in yeah, front it's of the Yeah, it's very cute. Food. It's very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wondering about that because it's so cute and it seems it seems kind of out of place there to be as cute as it is. Yeah. If um, if you Google Earth the train station, you'll be able to see the the daylighting that took place. I mean, they they did over two hundred yards of the Sawmill River and daylighted it in in length by I want to say it's fifty yards wide. So two hundred to two twenty in 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 length and uh, 50 wide. Um, and then they also placed um, McCoy and so forth right at the base of the train station on the opposite side. Oh, right. right. And there, there's the train station, right? And there, yeah. So thank you, and Dennis. This, and this was for flood mitigation they did this? No, they did this for economic development because what they did oh. now, this increased property values phenomenally. And so where, you know, I know the term ghetto is not a likable term, but in fact, it, that's pretty much what was down around this this parking lot, right? There was it was it was not a pleasant place at all, and now it's a beautiful place. So I'm suggesting that rather than put a tunnel on the ground, and I think a tunnel is going to get blocked by washing machines, sheds, everything. Open this thing up. Something you know, I'm not saying this is the design, but this path is clear and that's the army corps path and so when i say tweaking right um and i i showed uh, our village manager this friday because and he had asked me you know what i thought about it and i have a pump idea which I, I showed him also and you know he asked well you know would could would the army corps consider this tweaking and i think they would because i think i mean if you gave me a crew of guys i could probably open this up till the roadway you know, in two months, right? And line it with gravel and for now call it a day because in emergency preparedness, this this needs to be done. Now, at this end, you will have to open up the street and put a, at least two big culverts or a, a tunnel or culverts under there. So I'm suggesting that we follow the Army Corps dimensions, call it tweaking and and get on with it. Just get it done. You could get this done in six months. And I think if you did this, you would eliminate three to four feet of flooding in the in the village of Mamaronek, and and you'd ha wind up with a, a a huge environmental benefit and a, a benefit to our residents. So this is this is my pitch for not putting this tunnel underground, opening it up, daylighting kind of, and um, yeah, and making it an environmental and aesthetic mm -hmm. asset to the village. I mean, basically, it's it's the tunnel without closing the tunnel up. It's, right. It's, it's three sides. It's the same path that the tunnel would be. Exactly the same. So it's cheaper because. You and have, yeah, I think it should be cheaper. Absolutely. You don't have it's, to close it up. It, to me, and it's not even. I mean, a tunnel has to be structurally sound. Believe me, right. you have a. If I had a backhoe and a couple of dump trucks, I could get seventy-five percent of this done in no time flat. Right. Wow. Um, so just as a devil's advocate, because I, I obviously would prefer to look at beautiful water versus worrying that a tunnel is going to back up and whatever. But how many parking spaces that people pay for will you lose by doing this option? Well, let me preface my answer, Mandy, by saying I think we have to prioritize protection of our people and their properties before we prioritize parking, right? So I think, and I've done the counting here, I think you could open up, you're going to probably lose about 30 spots. Um, now, Kate has an example in France where what they did was they opened this up and then, I'm not sure exactly, maybe you'd have to put another culvert here. 
you could probably save some of the spots, right? Because in France, they're doing it so that you park on here, but it's permeable and it's the water can run over it like kind of as an overflow. And then, you know, people would have to be, you know, I don't know whether we'd have a, you know, some type of an, a, a, a digital system where if you were parked there, you'd get a, uh, a warning that, hey, you better move your car because it's mm -hmm. going to get flooded. So, um, but anyway, so can you I are going to lose spots. No if, ands, and buts about it. Can I uh, throw Absolutely. Um, can you, uh, let's see, Ellen, can you pass it over? Let me just fit, show yeah, a few more ahead. slides. So, yeah, Kate, so this was, take it over. yeah, so this, this is some of the spots, and this is what I was calling Confluence Lake, right? To mm -hmm. say, okay, if, if we didn't want to do this part of it, keep the current path, but at least give the water some place to expand. Um, I don't like, I like the idea of this lake, but I think from a, mm -hmm. a flood mitigation perspective, this this thing here is would be much more effective. And so, does the Army Corps have an example of like something that has been done somewhere that looks like what they want to create in the parking lot and is and is it successful? I'm like, I'm sure they do. Idea. It's a good question, but um, like I say, my mind is that to put a tunnel under here is a 1920s solution not a 2020 solution right. so let's let's go forward 100 years not back 100 years but their tunnel is going to work as, until it gets blocked up um i think this concept will work as well if not better and it has these you know you know why do you put a green roof on a building right you can have an asphalt roof it's you know but you get other amenities so um so, Kate, if you want to put something up, do you want me yeah, to start sharing? I can add to, you know, um, I can add to the concept. All right, hang on. Let me stop sharing. So, so I think that Debbie actually asked a really um, critical question, which is, did um, Yonkers do this for flood mitigation? And I guess I would have assumed that the answer was yes, but it wasn't yes. And um, while likewise, Amanda, of course, I'd rather see this than have all these, you know, these big parking lots that don't help with flooding, uh, but are there examples of this kind of thing that were done for flood mitigation? There, okay, I can answer your question. Um, so um, the the Army Corps is re, is re, is is uh, changing its policies. Um, I mentioned this in that email I sent you about a half hour ago. Um, so they put out a new policy document in um, September. It's called something like nature and nature-based solutions. Um, and I can send it to all of you. It's over a thousand pages long. Um, and there's a large section in there about daylighting rivers. And they've done many projects around the United States because for example, in, um, in um, Yonkers, that river was put underground in, 19, in the early 1920s. And in actual, in actual fact, a lot of it is still underground in a flume that no, it's not all above ground. So it was daylighted in that particular case, more for environmental and aesthetic reasons, not to do with flood control. Um, right now, I can send you an article about this. In, during Ida, there was a lot of, we think we had it bad. There was terrible flooding also in the Bronx. And one of the causes of that flooding was that Tibbetts Brook, um, is another uh, water course that was put in tunnels probably at the same time, tw 1920s when they did this. And, um, and the brook and the tunnels can no longer accommodate it. So it was leaking out and coming out and flooded the Major Deegan, came up into the Major Deegan. Um, so there is now a huge proposal going on in the Bronx to, to try to daylight this stream as part of flood control, okay? So the, the, the point with us, with here is that, um, you know, what we learned at the Army Corps meeting that was very clear is that um, the, the, what the design that they're going off of is the design that was developed, that was finalized in 2017, and that was developed in, in the years prior to that. 
And so that was a more or less, you know, formal design, not completed, but enough. And, but it was never funded. So the funding that, that, that exists, the 88 million or whatever it is, is around that, is for this previous plan. So for them to change the plan and go back to use more, more up-to-date data, they have to throw all that out and then we start all over again. And it takes years to develop these things. So nobody wants to do that. But having read this thousand page document, um, one comes up with the conclusion that their, their own thinking has evolved. So, so they know that it is better long-term for flood control to, um, to go with a more environmentally sensitive notion, but they can't start from scratch. They have to tweak their plan. They use that term. Um, so, you know, be, you know, so, you know, Tony took me down and, and we've talked about this. This was in the winter. Um, and, you know, just to get it into the public record, I, um, you know, just, I proposed it out loud at that meeting on the 18th. And um, the reaction was favorable. Um, so let me tell you, since we're sort of launching into this, exactly what I proposed. Um, okay, so let me quick open all this, let, just a second. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a picture of Columbus Park. I took this off the village's uh, oh. flood, flood site. Okay, so just, it's a little more of a close-up than what, what Tony showed you. So this is the Mamaroneck River coming down. This is Jefferson. This is a bridge, Jefferson Avenue. And this is the Sheldrake as it comes in to, and they meet here in what Tony's calling, you know, confluent, uh, confluence, where the two meet, right? Um, so, the, you know, as, the, as you know, Tony explained, the, the issue is, is that these two rivers meet, um, connect with each other. Then they go underneath what is another, what is effectively a bridge. It's this driveway that goes into the um, Metro North station, uh, passes under the bridge and basically hits a wall. The wall is the side wall of the railroad state of the railroad tracks, a huge wall. Um, and this and is basically put into quite a narrow channel here. Uh, so then it, it goes a short distance and it hits another wall has to make a sharp, again, a sharp right turn to go underneath the railroad. And so you see it coming out here from underneath the railroad and then go underneath Halstead Avenue, right? So this, this picture is from the Army Corps uh, document. This is from their um, environmental impact statement. So they don't, they don't give you a lot, but they, they, I mean, it's not really much, man. But they've they've drawn it here. They've so this is this is the river here. We we're coming down. Whoop, we're coming down. This is the Sheldrake. We're coming down. This is the Mamaroneck. This is this is Columbus Park. They meet here, et cetera, et cetera. So you see, this is their tunnel. So this was designed actually quite a while ago. I think the actual design goes back prior to the. I think it goes back even maybe to the 1980s. All right. Here's a here's a photograph. Yeah, question. Just quick question. Is yeah. that tunnel the key element of their project? It's a big, I think it's a big part of it. Um, their other aspects of their project are they're going to replace the Ward Avenue bridge. That's the first thing they're going to do. They're going to remove that. They, they said this um, the other night. Yeah, I heard they're that. They're going to replace the Ward Avenue bridge um, because it's, it's a narrowish bridge to make it, you know, have larger capacity. Then um, if you look, if you go into this Army Corps document, God help you, um, they give you side pictures of, uh, they give you side views of the river and you can, you can see sort of the shape of the bottom of the river, which is very bumpy. And so they're gonna smooth out that shape. And one of the things they're gonna do is they're gonna, because they, they've, they've determined that it's not cost, they can't, you know, they can't tell Metro North to, to change their thing, that's too much. And they've determined that the Halstead Avenue bridge is very expensive. It's not cost effective to replace it. So, um, because it has a lot of sewer lines that are underneath it and a lot of electric lines. So they're deepening, they're gonna deepen those channels by quite a bit. And they're deepening channels all along the river. And they're also widening the river where they can. 
So they're doing a lot of work along the river. They, you know, they, they, they're, they're in the design phase. So they haven't given us a whole, whole lot. You know, you, you saw the presentation, you know, it was a little, you know, it was a little light on the details, but when you read in here, that's what you, um, that's what you come up with. Is that the answer? Yes, thank you. Are you okay. I, I can add a little bit. The, the four, the yeah. kind of four phases to the project. And as Kate mentioned, the first was Ward Avenue Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is Waverly Avenue Bridge, which the town is actually actively in design and uh, where that should be replaced probably next year. Uh, the third phase is the confluence, and then the fourth phase was the channel work. So could I ask, just ask a really dumb question? And like, this is a dumb question, but how does replacing a bridge help flooding? I, I, if you look at, if you go down to the, to the Ward Avenue Bridge, for example, um, it was built in 1937. It was part of the WPA, super pretty. Um, so the circle, you know, where the river comes under the circle, it looks like those bridges under the mm. you know, drive on the sawmill, right? Mm. So they can, so they're going to probably make it higher. They're going to make it wider. It's just going to be a bigger opening. If that's exactly so, what we're doing with the Hillside Avenue bridge. Yeah. So, so more water bridge. can go underneath it, basically. Because yeah, so, right now, when it's a narrowish opening, what happens is the walls of the bridge, the stone walls function as a dam effectively. The water rushes up to them and can't get through. So it backs up and goes into the neighborhoods. Yeah, you know, what we've done with Ward Avenue, uh, sorry, with Hillset Avenue Bridge is we've constructed the new abutments on the bridge to be deeper, to uh, match the, the future Army Corps dredging. Uh, we have maximized the arched opening of the bridge which we had to maintain some sort of arched opening because of the historic character of the bridge, which would be the same with Ward Avenue. So- Bridge is that, Hillside? Um, Hillside Avenue Bridge, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, hopefully uh, should be open within the next, uh, uh, you know, six to eight weeks. Finally finished with that. Um, yeah, so we, we it, but what needs to be done with Ward is exactly what we're doing with Hillside Avenue. Okay. So maybe get some nice before and after pictures once that's done. So the, those bridges were a log jam. They, the water was yeah. overflowing yeah. over the bridges. Restriction points. Okay. Yeah. So so here's just to kind of orient people that you know may not remember. Um, this is a side view of this parking lot. So I took the when I took this picture, I'm basically standing uh, up against the fence that backs onto. Uh, as close as you can get to that railroad bridge, looking back across the parking lot to exactly where the um, culvert, you know, this, they call it a culvert. This, you know, we call it a tunnel. An underground tunnel is going to start, right? So we all, all we have is this that they showed us. So I asked my husband, who's pretty, pretty good at this, uh, to draw it for me in Photoshop. If you basically, you know, because we want to tweak it. So we put it exactly so we're, you know, no changes, right? The only change is that instead of having the way, what the, what the gentleman from the Army Corps, the hydrologist uh, named An Andrew, Andre Chauncey said, is that it's 25 feet wide, it's eight feet high, and the, the tunnel stops three feet under the parking lot. So the, you know, the parking lot could have anything on it, you know, huge trucks. It has to be very, very strong to support to support all of that parking. And, and why, why are they doing this? Well, the reason is because their mandate, their Army Corps operates under a lot of rules. And so they're, what they can build is flood control infrastructure. They don't have the mandate to go out and say, hey, let's change your parking lot, you know? No, it's our parking lot. They have to give it back to us exactly the way it is. So it's up to, so I said, hey, how about, could we do it a different way? Uh, so, so what I proposed to him in this meeting was let's, so let's take another look at this. What are we talking about here? This, this is the river, okay? So the rivers have floodplains, okay? 
um, you know, that's when rivers are, when rivers make themselves, they, they come down and they carve out, you know, they carve out land and they flood. And when they flood, they, they deposit their sediment um, and build up plains. That's why valleys are basically flat. You know, when, if you think about of a river comes down a mountain, ends up in a valley, goes through the valley, the valley is flat because it's deposited all this sediment, right? And rivers are meant to flood and they flood into the floodplains that they have created. And that's a natural process. Um, and so the Army Corps is attempting now in their new designs to, to honor those processes because they realize that given climate change and the amount of flooding we have, th they have to do so. So all every, the entire village of Mamaroneck almost is a floodplain, but most of it's built on, so there's nothing you can do about it. It's not cost effective to, you know, to buy houses and knock them down. However, we've got this park parking lot and we've got this parking lot. So, and now these parking lots, I don't know when they were built, but they were, they were raised up. They were built on fill on what I gather um, was probably a wetland. So it was, so they were raised significantly higher and covered with concrete. So I said to the hydrologist, what if we took off the concrete, okay, got rid of some of the fill, turned your underground culvert into an open air culvert as Tony is proposing, and then lowered all of this, this too, by the three feet or so, it, it may be more because there's, this thing has a slope as it goes. This is the input. This is exactly where their plan puts it. This is the input from the river, and this is the output that goes into a tunnel and goes here. And why are they doing it? Because in a flood, they don't want the water to have to go all the way down here, hit the wall, hit the other wall, et cetera. They want to take some of the water and move it faster and get it out of there. So that's their basic plan. Um, but if you um, say, hey, this is floodplain, now, the example that Tony and I were discussing was an example in, in France, whereby uh, there's a river that is prone to flooding there that I'm familiar with, and but they have parking lot there, but they call it submersible parking, which means when there's a flood warning, um, <laughs> you know, don't park, don't park there because it's going to flood, you know, and well, it's flo it flooded anyway. So exactly. So, yeah. you know, so <laughs> what, you, you can't save yourself. It's going to flood anyway. So let's go with it, right? So the, 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 what, what Mr. Chauncey said is, he, he didn't say no, he said, oh, okay, floodplain. He said, that's outside of our purview. That is something the village would have to do, would have to be approved by your elected officials. Um, but he by no means, you know, it, it's a good idea. It's a scientifically sound idea. So let's, let's just look and so you can imagine that you're going to lose some parking, but how much, I don't know. There's people who design this stuff who can tell you. I'm going to say maybe a fourth of the spots. Right now, there's hardly any parking in here. This side is almost always empty, but you're going to lose some. So, you know, we just threw some spots in here. Uh, hey, what do you little... think this means for the houses across the street? I think it's incredibly positive for them. And, and here's why. Because think about this. Right now... Let, let's look at, let me show you a few other pictures to get, let's get the lay of the land. Ah, here, let, here's a cute one. This is actually where the culvert would go. And there's birds in there right now in this puddle. They were there the other day. Here's a close up of the birds. So, oh. mm -hmm. okay. okay, this is the, this is the si side of the parking lot as you look down into the main part, as you're looking towards Mamaroneck Avenue, the main part of Columbus Park. This is this parking lot. This is all invasive <laughs> and it's, it's about 15, 20 feet tall. You cannot see over it. Um, this, is, this is looking back. This gives you a good sense of things. This is, I'm standing at the confluence looking towards the parking lot. Okay, the parking lot is on the other side, all right? But this is, the, I'm on one side here. Now I'm on the other side looking back at it. Look at the roof. Look at how high this stuff is. That you, I can barely see the roof. So this is, this is, you know, invasive species, whatever. That's how there's a tree. You can see the base of the tree. But all this, this is all fill. 
Okay, so this is sitting way up high, right? All right, so, and here's, and this gives you another view of it. This is looking up the river. This is the Jefferson Avenue Bridge. This is this, this um, you know, vegetated area and the parking lot is over here. And by the way, look, there's a lot of nature happening here. A lot of, lot of uh, wildlife and so on. So what will it mean um, for the, um, for the people who live here. So if this parking lot, we take off the asphalt, we lower it by three feet on this side, maybe as much as five feet on this side, depends because this is a grade that goes down, you know, it's a slope. Um, the, then you have, you're, you've got to have a bank to get down to it. So it's a vegetated bank, all right, full of willows and plants that are going to absorb water. Maybe we can convince them to actually put some street trees along the sidewalk like they're supposed to. But the vegetated bank goes all the way around. You go down here, okay? And we didn't draw this on this picture. And do the same thing here, by the way. Um, you put the parking on a, some combination of pavers, permeable asphalt, and you build in little, you know, uh, you know, like you've seen in some parking lots, like at the Jewish center over here on Palmer, where they have little little sections of um, trees and what have you, right? This will be a basin. The, the square footage, approximately, because I went to the GIS maps of the village um, they, that, that measure, you know, measure this stuff, that it's about 100,000, oh, let me see. Is it about, it's about 100, let me see here if I have it. Nah, I don't want to start looking for stuff. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, um, uh, I have the dimensions. If you, I put it in a letter to the Army Corps. I don't know if you, if you had time to read it. Yeah, so it's about a hundred thousand square feet. That's the dimensions, roughly, of the paved area. You get rid of the asphalt. You lower it by three feet, um, and you make it a permeable surface. So it's like a bowl. It's like a bowl now. Yeah. And, you know, it's below grade. It's below grade. But the, but that, I, I don't understand I finish, this. It's, yeah, let me sorry. just finish answering her question. It's below grade. It will hold 300,000 cubic feet of water. Okay, that will be absorbed into the groundwater. That is 2.2 million gallons of water that, that is being temporarily held there. In addition to the culvert, which, which they've already designed, which is moving water through. So it's a good measure for flood control. That's what happens in a flood. And when it's not a flood, um, you know, you you go in there and you this is this this is this vegetated area, which is now three to three, four, five feet lower, has beautiful trees in it. We we get money to get rid of all this, these invasives that we saw, that that knotweed. It's much lower. This is a very steep slope. You saw that picture. You saw how steep that slope is, which means it's eroding all the time, dumping silt into here, clogging it up, creating a problem. So what do, what do you have now? You have a situation where people from this neighborhood this have a pretty area. It's ugly as sin right now. They can get down here. They can have paths. They can get down to the water. It makes all this area much more environmentally attractive and functional, and it doesn't hurt the Army Corps' plan whatsoever. It's good for the environment, it's good for people. Okay, there you go. My, my, my question was, um, the, the Army Corps' uh, thing is above the level of the river. Mm -hmm. So when it's not flooding, there right. won't be water in that. That's correct. So, it's not really daylighting a river. Well, it's 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 avoiding the, a tunnel, creating a tunnel. Right. And, and what I would propose, I mean, the Army Corps has to, they would, you know, this is their design. So they'll say yes or no. But if you create this culvert here, there's no reason why it can't be um, grass. It could be grass that's mowed. It's, it's a big depression that goes down. Right. People can just walk right through it. 
Right. And it's it, not going to be really a river. It's going to be. No, it's not going to be a river. It's going to be a dry bed. <laughs> it's a, exactly. It's a diversion. It's basically a diversion channel. And it's only intended to come into service when there's a flood. Right. Because it's, yeah, if you look at the side views of it, it's above, you know, it's at a certain height. So this only becomes operational during a flood, but during flood, whoo, you're glad to have it. But the rest of the time, it's grass. We put all kinds of pretty flowers along the edge. We plant milkweed, blah, blah, blah. You can imagine how pretty we can make this. We can make it gorgeous. And it, so it's basically, by the way, this is Columbus Park. This is Columbus Park. That does not look like a park to me. You know, we turn it into a more park-like space and then we provide more access over to this space too. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, the, the, you know, I think my, you know, the guy, the, the Army Corps guy by no means said no, by no means said no, but the village would have to, so the, you know, they, they want to partner with communities and do things, but this is the reason why I'm bringing it to you guys tonight. And I don't think, you know, if we even have a quorum, is to try to explain the concept, you know, that, that Tony, um, you know, brought forth and shared with me and to, to see if um, we understand this concept and, um, you know, and that we think it's a positive one that the village should pursue. I think it's a great you idea. Have, um, it would be two things. Um, I think it would be good to get pictures of the parking lot in France. I think that'd be interesting to see. If you could get yeah, that. I mean, it's a very different situation because it, the thing is, um, it's it's France, so it's gravel. Okay. You know? It, you know, and here we can't do gravel. So, you know, it has to be a surface that we can plow. So, you know, we can use pavers. We can use, um, I'm going to France soon. I'll, I'll take a picture for you. But I don't, I don't think it's going to probably make the case. But um, there are pictures even in that document. Um, I'll go through that Army Corps document. Well, I, I guess my point is when, you, when yeah. you, you're referring to other Stuff. Um, scenarios, it's always good to have a visual that goes with yeah, it. Yeah, sure. Um, sure. Well, that's else. why we, you know, yeah. but if you can imagine it, you know, I mean, this isn't much, but, you know, that this is a depression um, and it's, it, you know, could be grass and, you know, like have plantings and then we could have quite a lot of little plantings interspersed so long as it you know yeah. it didn't interfere with the roadway mm -hmm. and then i would imagine all along here have it densely planted with i love willow bushes and they're great for absorbing water and of course there'll be a few openings where there'll be pathways down for people who need to get oh, down and we could also get the um sarah powell involved in all of our meeting last month yeah um, Maybe. It would be nice to have access to the river because there actually is no ac very little access to the yeah. river. I man, I I walked through there like uh, the other day because I said I got to know what's down in there. Uh, I mean, it was pretty scary. Um, you know, I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm a Girl Scout, but you know, this is, this is almost yeah. too much because uh, it's dense, dense, dense with invasive, right. and it's pretty. It's relatively steep. And if you yeah. lower it and you get all these invasives out of there and you put some nice, you get, you know, native bushes and whatnot and put a couple of pathways and maybe a pathway along here. Yeah. And because I, I've seen guys I've, over here, um, along here, uh, fishing, yeah. you know? I mean, people oh. will use it. People will enjoy it. Sit on a bench, what have you. It'll be nice. How many, how many inches of rainfall do you think you would need, like in order for it to be activated? Like, is this something that's going to be used a few times a year or is it going to be like only emergency case? I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I can't, I don't know. I mean, because you said uh, it was high, like the entrance yeah. would be higher up. So it's not like the river is going to flow there. It's just no. like a yeah. dry, you know, the it's in the Army Corps plan, which, you know, mm -hmm. trust me, that is. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's not that simple to follow, but um, it, you know, I can find that for you. I can say, no, I, I was just, no, it's, it's not yeah. imperative. I just, I'm always on the other side. Cause I feel like mm. someone out there may say, well, how many parking spots are we getting paid for annually here? Even if we don't see cars, it doesn't mean they're not getting annual payment. 
and someone mm-hmm. may eventually weigh that against okay. yeah. I mean, how much. I, I'm just being devil's advocate because yeah, obviously sure. I would always go for tearing out invasives and looking at water. I've seen the page where they where they show you the level of the culvert um, against you know the one year flood, the ten year flood, the hundred year flood, the five hundred year flood, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't re- you know I don't remember exactly. I can go look right. at that again, That's fine. but I don't. But, you know, it'll have, even, you know, like in a room, if you saw that picture that, you know, this is just, this is like, uh, it wasn't even that rainy, you know, but, you know, puddles form and so on and so forth. So, yeah, there's, a, there's definitely going to be a give back of parking spots. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to guess 25, 30, maybe 30%. You know the people who do this work are good at it, and um, you know they figure out ways to get the maximum, you know, parking spots into an area. Um, especially in France, do they do it? You know, people will park anywhere. Anyhow, so that's kind of all I have to say. Um, it, but um, you know, oh yeah. Hmm. Uh, there's a gentle, there's a gentleman that I think had his hand up before me. That's Tony. Tony, I'm sorry, you, you, your name says Ellen. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I lost my internet, and when I got back on, it says Ellen. So, Mandy, in, in kind of in somewhat of answer to your question about how often, on 613, which was about a week ago, I guess, mm-hmm. um, we got 0.85 inches of rain in six hours, right? Kate, can you put your cursor by the, I call it the sandbar. Oh, down here? No, across the river. Oh, over here? Right oh, here. This, this so yeah, so yeah. that, right, yeah. so that, it, right, that, you're really like at low, low flow right now. After um, 0.85 inches, that whole little, mm-hmm. I call that the, the sandbar, was mm-hmm. underwater. So I would have expected okay. that that tunnel would probably have started flowing at that point yeah. now the army corps okay yeah there you go that was completely underwater the other morning because i take metro north and um i you know one of the keys to prevent the flooding is to start to get the water out sooner than later because the longer you wait the more it backs up and then when you get you know you get an inch an hour for a while you you don't have even a, that tunnel might not have the capacity for it so i would say Anytime, you know, you get, this to me was pretty clear indicator, point, an inch in, in four or five hours, I would say, is going to make that, that tunnel flow or that channel flow because we're not doing a tunnel. That makes sense. <laughs> so Tony and Kate, I mean, you've both done amazing work on this. I mean, even just reading those documents, I, I give you a gold star. So, I mean, I, I appreciate it and I'm sure we all do. And I guess um, I always think about, okay, so, you know, how do we get to an action plan here? Mm-hmm. And I think that while you both seem to really know what you're talking about, I think to bring credibility to this idea, we would probably need to bring in an engineer or consultant of some sort, you know, maybe even the one that you mentioned um, did the Larkin project. Um, But I think that we really, to have credibility, need an independent um, engineer, flood expert, whatever. But clearly there's, I mean, you know, there's a lot of benefits to doing it this way. Um, Yeah, I mean, the idea would be for us with our, you know, you know, normal level of, you know, expertise to present it to the village, I think, to for them to say yeah this actually makes sense um let's hire it let's hire a consultant to study this i mean um that's that for sure they would there there's going to have to be professionals to come in and and you know uh advise the village um absolutely but that's going to cost money so um does that make sense as a way to go yeah i'm wondering if we could reach out to sarah powell from the long island sound study who, who we met. Yeah. Um, Cause I don't know if they would charge or not, but you know, this is a lot of what they do with these, you know, okay. um, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy, you know, so I Ellen I made the introduction for you, Tony with, um, with Sarah. 
Well, I, yeah, I spoke to Ellen, uh, Sarah, but uh -huh. Ellen, I walked here with, with Jerry on Friday morning and he, he seemed very positive about it. He thinks, well, I don't want to speak for him at all, but he seemed very positive about the idea. Also about the idea of trying to work with the Army Corps and using it as a team, right? And so I think that I think that we could. I I think if if the if the village, if meaning like the mayor and and the village manager, push the Army Corps a little bit to see if they would, you know, accept this design and and move forward on it i think i think that could be a big win because then maybe if if they're gonna if they would if the army corps would call it a tweak they'll pay for it okay so i you know i'm i'm of the mind that before we get other people involved I, you know i don't i don't know how you know your relationship you know Maybe just, you know, shoot Jerry an email saying, you know, you discussed this at, at the meeting. It seems like a positive thing. What are the next steps or something like that? Well, as, a, as a committee, can we not endorse it as a, a, a presentation to the village to consider to present to the Army Corps instead of us presenting it to the Army Corps? The village could present it if, the, if it's endorsed by the Environmental Committee. Can we ask that of them? Well, just what what thing you, you're so you you're not in a quorum right now, so right, you, right. You take any action. Yeah, that's the problem. Oof. Are I we not a quorum because we don't have a trustee? I'm sorry. I, is that no, no? We're waiting for one more member. We only have right now. We have five people, and because we're a committee of ten, we need six people. Which is why one of the things on our agenda is we need to find one other person for this committee. So if anybody knows of anyone, that would be a good addition. Oh, there is some hate. We just got it. We just got our quorum. Oh, David's on. Hi, I just got off this Yay. other meeting. Hi. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. We um, I guess Hi. it's just an odd night where we've had um, I'm sorry, I'm... Many people couldn't attend, okay. and um, so we so now you make a quorum. So I'm gonna go, sort of speedy fast to just cover some of the things um that we need approvals for. But what we were doing the last basically hour and 15 minutes, just covering things that did not require a vote. And Kate- hey, I, I can vote for everything that has just been discussed. <laughs> and Kate and Tony <laughs> gave a very um, fulsome discussion about a tweak to the Army Corps of Engineer plan. Which, that's um, the word. <laughs> that's the so That's the word of the night. Exactly. Um, which, which we will have to catch you up on because we won't have yeah, time. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very interested in that because I'm not a huge fan of it, frankly. A huge fan of the, of the core project? of the core design yeah there's I, i'd certainly be interested in learning more okay so now that we have a quorum i will um officially start the meeting oh my goodness um which will be a short meeting wait um hey unshare your screen oh i'm sorry excuse me <laughs> i was trying to find i was trying to answer excuse me, i didn't realize i was i was rolling through my emails i was trying to find um that Army Corps page that shows the cross view regarding the flooding to answer your question. I couldn't find it. <laughs> I apologize mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Um, so I'd like to um, get a motion to approve the meeting minutes for May. Uh, you, need, you need to call the meeting to order first. I, I thought I did that. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, it's getting late. So let's call the meeting to order. It's 824. Do I get a motion? Yes. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. All in favor of starting the meeting. Aye. 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 <laughs> Great. Okay. A motion to approve our May minutes. So moved. Thank you. Christy, you seconding? Second. Okay. All approved. Approve. Approved. Okay. Debbie? Oh, you. She wrote them. On mute. Mm. Okay, Debbie, you're muted. Oh, I wasn't at the meeting. Do I still vote on? Oh, yeah, I wasn't at the meeting either. Well, I think if you've read them, you could still. Yeah. Yeah. No, you, you don't have to be in attendance to be able to vote for the meeting. Okay. okay. I vote. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Just asking. So, 
Um, so I'm just gonna rush through things. We, um, a bunch of us did a tour of Compost Ed, which is a facility in Valhalla run by the county. And it was just interesting. It's basically shows, you know, how things get composted and the benefits of it. And the guy that led the tour was amazing. So if anybody knows um, of any school groups or, you know, scout groups or any kind of group, he, this guy's really um, eager to get more sort of foot traffic through there. It's just, you know, it's really great for education. I would say he did a really great tour. Um, he was definitely, you know, we were a group of 15 environmentalists. Um, Debbie and I went from our committee. We had people from the Larchmont Environmental Committee in the town. So we were sort of Kate, all- Kate was there too. I'm sorry? Kate, yeah, Kate, Kate I'm sorry, Kate was there, my bad. Yes, you were in my car, I should know you were there. <laughs> and um, and I thought Alex was, was great. And I think that it, he would do a really, really nice um, presentation for school groups. So if anybody wants his contact, just you know, reach out to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're also gonna have a tour of the Willibrator, which is the incinerator in Peekskill. It keeps getting postponed. And now it's gonna be July 8th, no longer June 24th. Um, and I think that will also be interesting um, because you know it's really good to know sort of how things get thrown away and what happens to them. You know, Once they leave our kitchens, <laughs> where things go and what happens to them. And, I, and you, know, you really see sort of your own impact on the environment. And I think it's really important for people to see that. Um, as I said a minute ago, we really do need um, definitely one new member. I, I think, you know, we've had one member that has not shown up for, I think, the last six meetings. Um, so really, I don't know if he is considered a member at this point or not, but we need more people on the committee. We're doing a lot of things. I mean, we've had a call out. Just a can we a open call? example of, you know, just it should not take an hour and a half to get a quorum. It's just very frustrating. So. I'm sorry, Mandy, what were you saying? No, could we just put like an open call out and, and then just take resumes? Or, I mean, that's how that's I exactly how it works. Oh, okay. I just, so, I mean, I'd rather if, if people knew of any, you know, if, if you know of anyone that- I know a few people there. to ask. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then they submit their resume to um, to Sally Roberts. Okay. Okay. Um, Lou is not on yet. He had- there were police interviews tonight, and I know he got caught up with that. Um, but I was hoping he would give us an update. There was a discussion at the last BOT meeting about additional EV charging stations. So I'll just. I, mean, I, I can give a quick update on that. You know, so th there oh, were. The, uh, I, uh, Jerry spoke about the uh, the options that uh, Blink presented the uh, the ninety five five program where they own the machines. And we get the five percent of the revenue, uh, and uh, or the forty percent where we own the machines and the infrastructure. Um, we're recommending the ninety-five five program because it is a lot to maintain and manage these machines. The uh, the um, the situation I explained was with the one EV machine that we have at Hunter. Um, I just spent four months trying to get the thing repaired. And it was a very frustrating process. Um, if it was the company responsible for owning and maintaining it, that would probably be a bit streamlined. So, I, I mean, frankly, Dan, I I was in the meeting with Blink, yeah. with Brandon Jacobs, and I I just felt like, to your point, the ninety five five scenario was a no brainer um, yeah. because just even speed to market, right? I mean, there it's a turnkey. And the five percent we get is just sort of gravy, right? It's it's really providing yeah. service to. I mean, now that the you know, hi Lou. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that the movie theater is open, like, is even going to be more traffic coming to the avenue? Yeah. I mean, I think we need charging stations, and I think that everybody's in agreement on that. Um, um, uh, 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 Jerry, we just approved the uh, ten, I believe. Well, no, well, well it's going to be on the uh, the next week's agenda. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. I don't know why it keeps getting pushed forward, though. Is, is what's the reason for that? Um, it will have to it has to be in a, it has to be in a work session first, and then oh, okay. the rule is two weeks later that it goes on the uh, on the. Uh, All right, so it was just in the work session, and now it's going to get moved to the. Um, yes. Yes. The, okay. So that's great. That that's. Um, I mean, we should probably let Brandon Jacobs sort of know where we stand, so we get in the queue of. I mean, you know, we want to move fast, so I think that. Um, I'm happy to touch base with him or Dan, if you want to, we should just let. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk with Jerry tomorrow about that. 
And okay. these are the blink the blink units, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what I was saying is just let the guy that we're talking to for blink let him know where we stand because I don't know if they have, you know, if there's um a back, you know, how long it takes for them to respond. Hmm. I don't really know. Okay, so that's good news. I'm glad to hear that. And Dan Krishna is not on, but I'm sure he'd be thrilled to hear that. <laughs> okay, um, so there's been a lot going on um, with Healthy Yards, um, all great. And um, uh, I listened to the webinar that Jerry gave, I guess it was a week or two ago, um, with this company called Tech Terra. And I have to say, like, I learned so much about what our own village is doing, which is also positive that you know we don't use pesticides in our parks um in our fields it's all organic and um so jerry was being interviewed by this company that does organic landscaping and um i, I you know i've said this before about other things but i just don't know why we don't toot our own horn a little more on these things <laughs> oh. <laughs> dog, <please. Somebody's> dog? <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry Tony, take your dog out. That's a, that's a great segue. He is with, uh, <laughs> with no pesticides. Dog wow. friendly. Awesome. Um, so I think everyone knows that um, Mayor um, Tom Murphy signed the Mayor Monarch Pledge um, back in February. And we've a bunch of us, um, mostly led by Mandy, have been extremely busy coming up with all these very creative things to do to sort of meet the um, pledge requirements. and. Um, I'll just rattle off a few. One, actually, Debbie is working on trying to get a mural done. Um, we've bandied about a few locations, having maybe um, even a movable installation. And the latest is having something um, at the library, whether actually on the walls, a permanent installation, or something that would be um, sort of uh, like not permanent, a temporary installation. Like a, like a banner, sort of. Like yeah, like those banners they put in the city. Like a candy like or something. Yeah. I forwarded the email to my wife. Thank you, David. Who has not responded to me. <laughs> oh my God. Maybe I should have reached out. Um, so that's all very exciting. Um, but I'll, I'll, also, I'll, after, after we adjourn, I will ask you. All right, thank you. Um, we have, and I, I don't think we have that much time today, but we have talked about whether we should propose the village enacting an ordinance that you know, our own plantings on village property be native. I know that that has to be carved outs because some things have to be decorative. You know, there's certain spots that you just every season need to have, um, you know, the decorative stuff. But I think that whether it was done in an ordinance or not, I think it's sort of the understanding. And um, recently there was natives planted by people on our committee. Thank you, Christy. I think that was Christy, Kate. That was Christy. Renee. Let it. <laughs> oh, just Christy? You well, she me? led the, the charge. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if anybody passes the flag pole around Columbus Park, think about Christy. She planted a lot. Somebody put an angel statue, which is really cute. Um, <laughs> that's all it's native. It's huge. <laughs> um, Where did that come from? So, 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 Ellen. Yeah. Just thinking about if we wanted to do something official we could pass a resolution urging the village to the extent practicable uh, to always plant native plants um, in, on, in public spaces. That, that gives the village a little bit of an out in case there's an exception that, that needs to be made. Yeah, well, uh, that, that seems to be the, the one thing I would worry about is that with, the, with climate change upon us, uh, the nature of native uh, is in flux. I mean, I've, I've read a little we bit. Could, about we this. could add that. Yeah, I mean that. It's that, not that, complicated. Yeah, native yeah. plants are plants that are that are that are that are, are um, can can be acclimatized to the the climate that we expect to have in the future. I mean, there's a way of doing that. Yeah. Those aren't well, big I, words, just, but we can figure it out. And just to add to that, David, I think that, and I should have mentioned this when I was talking about. Um, the organic um, park maintenance. I mean, we're we're fortunate that our village manager has sort of that background um, in horticulture. Um, he's an arborist, so I think that he has that mindset. But I think that you know we should think about for the next village manager. You know, they may have a totally different way of doing things, 
and may love pesticides. So I think that if we codify that, um, we sort of protect ourselves in that way. Because I think that, again, like Jerry's done all these great things. And I think, you know, Jeff Hahn, the Parks Department, they all sort of subscribe to that wanting to have, um, you know, electric equipment and no pesticides. But I, I think that we should think about a resolution that in all ways practicable, that should be how the village maintains its parks and, and fields. But we could we could also consider banning the sale of um, of certain pesticides like uh, glyphosates uh, in, in the village. That's like a whole other. Yeah, that's that, whole that, other that's going to create some hard. issues. I think. Yeah, that's as far tough. As operations. It wouldn't be you know out of character. I know back in I want to say twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. Uh, the board adopted a resolution about our annual uh, mosquito program mm -hmm. you know, saying, you know, that we should uh, use, uh, you know, uh, low impact uh, uh, chemicals, uh, you know, our public notification procedures, which is what we've been doing the last couple of years. So there, there is some sort of precedent for, you know, having a policy statement about, about those types of things. Having a policy statement favoring certain things and having a ban on certain products are two different things entirely. Yeah, from I, I, I was talking about the first part about the native, yeah. The native yeah, that that's, uh, um, I, I, you know, that's that's a that's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, so Did Jerry, I, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say I sent around the um, the county's policy. Uh, I don't know if you guys, you know, had a chance to look at that, but the county adopted an executive order about this, and it explains, you know, why native plants are good and so forth, um, so that we could use that as the basis, you know. Yeah. Um, as you know, as you know, to, as a model, you know, it's legalistic and and explanatory as well. Well, maybe do, do you have it handy? Maybe you could circulate it. And we can take a look at it. Um, do it right now. Okay, I, I did send it to everyone, but let me see if I can, I'll, I'll try to find it and send it. You could also do like percentage native, only because I know like, I hate to say this, but like in the entrance of Harbor Island Park, there's like a few dozen butterfly bushes. And I mean, I, I mean, I could read like three sentences about butterfly bushes. I mean, it is a bully. It pushes all natives out. The seeds spread very abundantly and it's a bad plant. Basically, it's like the junk food nectar where people, uh, the butterflies are attracted to it, pollinators are attracted to it, but it is a host plant to no one. It feeds no one. So it does not feed caterpillars in like the stage, you know, the larval stage of mm -hmm. where they then progress to butterflies. So butterfly bushes are just aesthetically pleasing and they do feed someone, but they don't help anyone. Where goldenrod actually, like if you compare another plant, I think goldenrod is a host plant actually helps caterpillars like 125 species. So that's an example of why a butterfly bush that does not belong in New York, it feeds nobody and goldenrod feeds 120 somebodies. So that's just like an example of one so thing. Mandy, Mandy, would it make sense if we were to have a resolution along these lines to have an, a, an appendix with a list of what these what we really would want to see, you know, I don't know if it's 20 or even a not to see like calorie okay. pear trees should okay. never be planted here. Um, because what about like what about um, a ban on uh, invasives? In other words, you know, you, you, you have a list of plants that you, you that you not a ban, but uh, that are discouraged yeah. rather than rather than the opposite. Say you know we are we we discourage you know this this you know and, and it's a list that that gets longer. What I mean, maybe maybe that makes more sense. Or maybe we do both. We could do both. We could also even because I feel like it will eventually have to be educational because if we're asking the village to do it, we may have actually have to educate the public. So maybe we have a list of don't plant this, plant this. You know mm -hmm. that could take some research, but it it could be done. Um, so, so, so Lou, since, since our ro role is to help the board, what would you suggest we do? What would be helpful to the board for us to do in this um, area? To propose a, uh, uh, propose a uh, uh, rough resolution of what you'd like us to do. You, you would like us to, 
to um, uh, discourage certain plants or encourage other plants. I mean, um, with the aim being toward um, uh, sustainable um, pollinator plants and 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 and, uh, and things that will that will that will help the the local environment, we would uh, encourage the village to uh, avoid planting these things and uh, and uh, and um, encourage planting these things. Take you know. a look. I just sent you the. Um, I just sent you the executive order. It's in your outlook. Yeah. Okay. But ra rather than trying to 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 to, to write okay. it as we speak, maybe that should be an agenda item for ne the next meeting, right. and we can yeah, all or, look or at somebody it. here can tackle it and 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 we we can play with it. Uh, uh, play play with it. You know, nothing 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 happens fast. So, <laughs> but you know, it might be a good idea just to write something to not necessarily a final policy, but just like to respond to. Yeah. To get you started. So, Ellen, can I suggest that you appoint a subcommittee of people to look at this and come up with a proposed resolution for the next meeting? Well, I always like when you write our resolutions, David. Um, but we um, we have these pollinator ladies here, so we could all uh, talk about that. Um, okay. But then I would send it to you for your sort of overlay. If that's okay. Sure. How like Dan did it. So yeah, so maybe um, Mandy, Kate, and Chris, you can. I mean, I think Kate? this executive order that Latimer put out is is perfect because. Yeah. Um, Use it as a template. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I do Absolutely. like the idea. I, I do like the idea of having a listing of plants because a lot of people just don't. When you say natives, they don't really know. And a yeah, lot I of mean, people. I, I, I'm, I would never know that butterfly was a butter. Was it called a butterfly it's plant? Called a butterfly bush. Right, yeah, it's an oxymoron. Butterfly bush is bad. Yeah. I would, you know, I'm like. It sounds good. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds, sounds like, like it sounds like it should be something we. we want. And they are pretty, That's and butterflies land on them, so people get all excited. But right. you know, no one's doing the research, so it's okay. All right, so we'll we'll put yeah. together something. I mean, these um, lists, the 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 um, native plant center at Westchester Community College has lists. Um, you know, they have a Westchester you know, list. That's good. Yeah, they have a local. Oh, yeah, list. we could just attach that. We and don't. The need thing to. is, you know, um, that you know, people start to cross their eyes because the you know why is this you know um, viburnum good and not that? They have you know, and what's the difference? Well, the di they have um, you know Latin names. You know, the difference yeah. between one and the other is a Latin name. The one comes from Japan and the other comes from here. Yeah. You know, but so they. Um, you know, so the you know people can get really bogged down in the list too. Yeah, I mean, uh, just like you, you you say, we want to avoid uh, the butterfly plant uh, because uh, you know it's a bully and it crowds out other native species. And uh, although it attracts does attract bu butterflies, it doesn't do X, Y, and Z. And that's it. You know, you so you know why you're banning it or avoiding it. Right. Well, you can't do that for every one of them. Yeah, the I yeah. think it's easier just to have a list. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. but um, uh, we, we you know. To There's move it time. forward, can we, you know, how, how could, because, you know, we, these things get put off, you know, there's that executive order that, uh, you know, that's there. Can we, can we use that as a basis or, you know, do we yeah. have to do, do yeah. something? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think uh, you, you shouldn't reinvent the wheel unless you have to. Yeah. And also and the agree. fact that, that it's already in effect for Westchester County mm -hmm. is supportive, you know, it's going to help get people who would otherwise be skeptical to, be willing to sign on to it because mm -hmm. it's we, we're not inventing it. Agreed. I, just, Agreed. I do just want to point out to people that there is, in case you haven't noticed, when you drive by the entrance to Orienta, um, where that sort of the um, stone wall is, there's all new plantings. But on the other side of the wall, you'd have to be inside of Orienta driving out. It's a pollinator garden. So if anybody wants to sort of see that, it's it's a brand new pollinated garden. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be used. So that was actually done by um, spearheaded by June Ottinger with the Harbor Island Conservancy, and it's county land, and um, she is planning on using that for educational purposes. And I think that that's just wonderful because so, you know the more that kids learn about the natives, and they could identify them, it just perpetuates that whole thinking about it. Um, but the reality is that when you drive by, it looks much prettier on the other side of the, of, you know, of the wall that's not native right now. It's, it's just yeah, because it needs a definition of years, though. 
so it's just it it, it is it is hard to get people's mind adjusted to what like what's pretty versus what's traditional pretty versus what you know more natural meadowy kind of look um i'm just going to move on though if that's okay i'm um, sorry but we are what is the what is the upshot of this discussion I'm the upshot actually, is that we are going to as a committee um propose a resolution that the village um all to the extent possible plant natives um, I think it's hard to put a percentage on that, um, and I don't want to get caught up because I could get, I don't know, I, a percentage makes me uncomfortable. I think they've said, I think they've said that, in this thing. I mean, it's I, I think that we should have um, allowances for decorative planting seasonally in certain spots, but I think that um, we should just sort of mirror what the county did and maybe attach a list of the do's and the don'ts. And they did that in 2018. I just looked at it, Kate. Yeah, it's been there for a while. Yeah. For, I don't know how well enforced that is. To are we are making a recommendation. Or are we going to have a, a more discussion on this? Well, I think that we should have a draft ready for next meeting when we have a bigger group, and then we can then go from there. Is that is that okay? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So we're going to have a draft for the next meeting. Yeah. Well, so is, there, is there any objection to promoting um, the county's verbiage now? Can't we just can't we just take a moment and look at it? Not all of us have seen the counties. Work. Okay. Yeah, I would like. I know I read it a long time ago, Christy. I'd like to just look at it again. Okay. I just. I. I hope I, I'll try to be. I, I should be able to be back. I just. It's the next two months are going to be very tricky for me, and I'll do okay. my best. Okay. Okay. So is or is someone going to specifically work on this, or are yes. we doing that? Uh, I'll I do a list of natives. All right, and I know I can start a list of natives it. off of based off of the Westchester Community College list. Right. It's pretty easy just to copy paste. And Kate, I could work with you if you want to just we could draft something off of the, the county document. All right, thank you. Um, so I I just want to really give a huge shout out um, to Mandy and to Kate and to <laughs> Debbie and to Christy and a little to me <laughs> for um the great weeding that we all did yesterday. So um, <laughs> if, I think David, do you know about where the Rockland pocket is? We've been talking about it the last few meetings. And Lou- I know approximately where it is. So it's it's this newfound spot that Mandy has brought to all of our attentions. And um, it's been so neglected. So when we first spotted it, it was just really littered. It was like a dumping site. Um, a lot of commercial businesses around there were dumping a lot of beer cans, soda cans. It was really disgusting. But what Mandy found is that mixed in in this site are all these um, milkweed plants. So she um, cordoned off this area to sort of save the milkweed. And then yesterday we went, we tried to weed because there's a lot of invasives to so that the milkweed can thrive. Um, and then it also sort of indicates. Um, I guess Christy, who's going to come and mow? Is it the is it the highway department? The 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 highway. So uh, Jeff of Parks has asked to be cc'd on any email. Okay. Uh, sort of the primary group that was working the properties on that email chain, but forwarded to and I don't know his name off the top of my head who who manages the mowing of that, which is associated with the highway department. Oh, James uh, Barney. Uh, Jeff doesn't sound right. I'd have to go over to Outlook, which I don't have in my phone. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. But the point is that we, oh, and also David Finch was there helping also. Yeah. It was amazing progress made yesterday. And so now you can more clearly see the milkweed. It stands apart from everything else. And you can also see sort of what needs to be actually cleared out. So hopefully um, whoever is responsible for doing that area, whether it's the highway department or parks department, they will now clear out the area of all the- It's invaders. Rockland and what? It's Rockland and Fayette. Mm, it's actually a different street, officially. Okay. I'll tell you in a second. Oh, the extension no, I think, of- I think it is Fayette. I think yeah, it is Rockland and- And so really once all these invasives are cleared out, it will be amazing to actually have a path from the street to go straight down to the Sheldrake. Mm -hmm. and so the, the notion is that the vision is that this would become a butterfly habitat with maybe benches and, you know, really make something so beautiful out of what was really a dumping ground. Wow. And Ooh, would you like to see it? Would you like to go down? I'll, I'll take you on. Field trip. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'll, 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 you know, listen. In my travels, um, I'm, I've been task saturated lately. Okay. I'll, I, I'll, I'll stop it, but that's very kind of you. Thank okay. you. You'll see at the corner of Rockland and where Fayette basically comes out of the industrial zone. That's and we could we, maybe we could designate it as like the the uh, the butterfly zone or something. I, like I that. mean, that's well, what I think. I think it, one step ahead of you. We call <laughs> it. To, I would love to dedicate it and call oh. it a. We could call it, I, I'm referring to it as the Rockland Triangle because the pocket is actually that larger area that's mm -hmm. behind between the river and the thruway. So mm -hmm. we call it the Rockland Triangle Nature Preserve. How's that? All right. Because it's not just butterflies, it's going to be birds, it's going to be rabbits, it's going to be all kinds of stuff. Sounds good? Sounds good. Good. Let's go do it. <laughs> all right. I mean, that would be, I think the village has to do that. So maybe, do, is that an agenda item that we can vote on? And could, we could do that. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can, you could give us an update. You could, we could get some pictures. You could do it, give us a little presentation of what you've done. And, and here's what we'd like to do. We'd like to call it this and get, you know, and, and put it on the parks departments, maybe a uh, um, uh, 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 routine on their, on their, on their schedule to go by and, and tend to it. Or whatever. Maybe you know. nobody touches it, really. Kate gave me a uh, gave me a milkweed uh, seminar uh, uh, over the weekend. <laughs> On Juneteenth, <laughs> I bet you here, poor man. Lou, can I just ask you a question? A question: If it's mowed by the highways, highways, you don't want, to, you don't want to mowed. We don't want to mow, but that's who's not mowing it right now by request. Is that part of the village? Uh, uh, you know, I don't think that. I mean, highway highways. No, no, it, it, uh, not it's not the division of our public works department. Oh, okay, it's public work. Okay, so it's public works. We we can yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's village property <laughs> maintained by the village, but designated not part of a park. It's it's not it is not dedicated parkland. I'm I'm fairly confident. I mean, I have to check the uh, uh, the GIS to check the ownership because I know there may be some. Uh, uh, if it's next to the throughway, there may be some weird ownership issues. Okay, it's owned by the village. I, okay, I've okay. checked. Yeah, um, I know it, it, it gets weird in some places next mm -hmm. to the throughway. It's owned by the village. One yeah. weird thing is that I wanted to, it's also on your agenda, is that the, um, I, when I look at the zone, I happen to look at the zoning map, which is on the village website, and all those areas, um, including this triangle area, which are village owned, are actually zoned as. Um, single family house. So I don't know if either the, the zoning map has never been updated or there's a big mistake in it. So I don't know. Do you know anything about that, uh, Dan? No, I mean, I have to look into it. I mean, my, my, my guess is either the zoning map was never changed or because the property is owned by the village it may have felt no need to rezone it because mm -hmm. I I I I'm, I don't think it could be developed over there. It floods. I mean, this, the zoning maps in this village are notorious for being not updated. For example, there's a street running down what is now called known as the Otter Creek Preserve. It's still a map street. Well, if we have if we haven't if we have not disposed of the map street, it's still a map street. Exactly. You know, a map street exists until the village board demaps it. That's so, my point. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's that's it's not it's not a mistake in, on the map. It's just it's the, it's the reflection of the reality. So the question is, if we're moving, our committee is moving towards a place of wanting to formally preserve these areas, like the Rockland Triangle or the Rockland Thruway Pocket, pocket, and so on. Um, is it? Oh, does does it not have to be zoned as parkland, or is that okay? No, I mean, well, you, as long as the village owns it, you know, the village can do with it as it pleases. Now, if the village, uh, you know, if the village were to take the step of dedicating as parkland, then it couldn't be undedicated unless you had a special act of the New York yeah, State Legislature. Yeah. That's you can't alienate parkland in New York State mm -hmm. without a special act of the legislature. So um, it might be easier just to uh, um, do it and uh, leave it the way it is. Yeah. Well, 
just before we do anything official, let's talk to our legislators or DEC because there may be some funding available for newly established parks, which we would want to take advantage of if in fact that exists. Kate, maybe it would be beneficial. I agree with you, David. Um, Kate, maybe it would be beneficial if we, even though the other one is called on paper, like the Rockland pocket or three-way pocket, what if they're like, one of them is like the Rockland pocket park and that one is like Rockland pocket trails or something. I feel like they should have the same name. Okay. Yeah, that's just that's my, good. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But if we were going to go for park, I mean. We'll leave the meeting soon. It should, uh, they should both it, be park. Yeah. I mean, it seems to me that we should consult the village attorney too. Yeah. Because that, there's that, a specific, I think there are some specific rules as to what you do to create a park and 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 what's involved and some of the things that are constraining constraining uh, considerations. I, and and that's a somebody who knows this area want to take a look at that. So so here's what we do is, is we, we will call we'll we'll, we'll schedule something called rock and park uh, rockland park it rockland pocket <laughs> um uh a proposal and mm -hmm. and you can say that that you could say what you've done and then request the the uh the the board um consider either um developing it or or, or uh, developing it further along this this route or or designating it a park or something else but uh we we'd Is like there? to do i don't know and then just and then and then in the work session we can we can uh, uh, you know refer things to the attorney and, and do all that and, and do the work on it. Maybe you get the staff involved. Hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so okay. how do we proceed then? Ellen, I have to go. Okay. Okay, Tony. It's so nice seeing you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so Tony. much for letting me. Have a good evening, everybody. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Uh, so um. Thanks, Kate. Yeah. I'm hoping we can still vote on this thing tonight. Um, now that we have a quorum, do we still? Do we still? One, two, three. Yeah, we do. Okay, so uh, all right. We're, um, uh, uh, so so should I'll wait for something from you before I put uh, I put something on a work agenda? Okay. 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 I, I mean, <laughs> just, just as just, um, I know that we have a lot of things that we're trying to get on the agenda, and I think that's nice. We have to prioritize. And I think this, my opinion is the Rockland pocket we could continue along for a little bit before we really need to do anything yeah, official. I agree. Okay. So I think that we have a lot of other things and I, I think we need to sort of pick our spots here. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so um, great, I'm, I'm glad we're- Put it back in our pocket. Put it back in the pocket. <laughs> so what do you need to vote on tonight? Well, we're. Um, I I did a rel relatively lengthy uh, proposal, um, Lou, about what you and I spoke about when we were in the park together, um, talking to the Army Corps about making their tunnel through the Jefferson parking into an open culvert, and asking the village to um, convert that, change the nature of that parking lot by removing the asphalt and lowering the level so that it can function as a floodplain. Um, and, you know, we talked about it quite a bit, but uh, we didn't have a quorum to vote. Um, and, you know, time is kind of of the essence here. This is an important matter. So, um, Ellen, what, 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 how should we handle well, this? Well, here's, here's how I, I would like to proceed on this. Um, so, unfortunately, David, Christy, and Lou, you did not have the benefit of a really um, intelligent, fulsome discussion of what they're calling a tweak to the Army Corps of Engineer project. And mm -hmm. it's a tweak because if you ask them to change it, that's sort of a, you know, going back to the, we no one wants yeah. to go back to the drawing board, right? That's, no right. one wants to do that. So if it's a tweak, it's something that they can consider it. And um, it's not changing the overall concept of having sort of a, a way for the water to channel, another, another way to channel the water at that confluence area in Columbus Park. Um, just the Army Corps of Engineers is doing a sort of the old school way of having a tunnel under asphalt. This is really sort of, um, I forget the word to use, Kate. Uh, oh. daylighting. I'm sorry, daylighting it, where it basically brings it all above ground and 
making the Jefferson parking lot a floodplain and letting it flood when it floods. Um, now, the, the issue is that you do lose parking spots. Um, I think sort of, you know, commuter parking is different now anyway. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people are going, my husband included, I don't think he's ever going to go back to be a regular commuter. So I don't know that we need every last spot anyway, but it would be certainly a revenue loss. But certainly we want to prioritize, you know, people's well, uh, lives uh, and livelihoods in the village. So the bottom mm -hmm. line is that I personally feel like although Kate and Tony had a very intelligent and well thought out proposal, mm -hmm. I, I personally can't say that that's what should be done. I, I personally can't get behind that because I think that it still needs the endorsement of an actual licensed engineer. But I would propose to yeah. say that they, I want to give them um, approval to now take this to the BOT meeting and present what they presented to us. Uh, I mean, and you, know, you talk about licensed engineers, the Army Corps of, I mean, they're, they're all- Well, the Army, you know. Army Corps of is- so, so basically, when Kate raises at the at the meeting, she raises. Yeah. She got the nod. They didn't say, "Oh no, no, no way, no." They they seem to be receptive to it, but I think that we should have an independent engineer take a look at it, whether it's somebody who lives in the village or somebody we get you know hire for a couple thousand dollars to really get their opinion on would this be a better flood mitigation plan we know it's better for the environment we know that we could you know it, it had all this stuff to do with getting rid of the invasives and yeah yeah i mean i i think what you can do is you can say listen this we see your plan we 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 would like you uh to consider um uh opening that that tunnel and to make it an open culvert yes uh, running adjacent to a floodplain that would be placed where the uh where the um where the parking lot is and, right. and, and, you know, and the village will be willing to, to step in and do that part of that if, if need be, right. um, if you feel that would, that, that's, that's, that fits with the plan and then just let them say yes or no. I mean, that, okay, that, right. that because be it's basically the army Corps would say, well, that's village property and that's sort of the village's decision. But I yeah. am in favor today of putting Kate and Tony on the, sort of the, on the docket for a work, work session, session for Monday, yeah, for a work session to really go over this. Okay. With the board of trustees and with Jerry being there and Tom being there and getting a, a wider audience. Okay, fine. But, uh, yeah, and because J Jerry's going to be the liaison to the to the uh, Army Corps, and he okay. can you know, he can bring that to them and say, look, you know, this, the, these are the kind of things that we that we that 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 we're we're looking for. Um, um, you know, and then we're other, doing our other stuff too. You know, that uh, that that'll go parallel to it. Yeah, so that, that's a reasonable that's a reasonable um, request. And if they say no, you can't because, you know, the, the X doesn't meet the Y and the Framus doesn't go into the other thing. Uh, and then you go, okay, all right, well, then I guess the answer is no, but we can get an answer from them. We can tell them what we, what we would like to see. So the just basic, the basic idea is, is, to, okay. is to treat the, the, ton, the culvert as they designed it and say that we're going to tweak it by, by keeping it exactly the same, but making it open air but to make it function better, then the village will take certain steps to to change the dynamics of their parking lot. Okay, so I'll put a, 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 a well, what should I call this uh, this works work session uh, uh, agenda item? There's actually already an item on the work session for next week called tweaks to the RA plan. Okay. okay. So, so could um, I will be around on Monday night. I'm I'm leaving town on Wednesday, but. Could Tony, would Tony and I be able to come in and uh, address your work session on Monday night? Uh, I'm not sure. Do, do, do people address work sessions, uh, Dan? Um, yeah, sure they at, do. Well, the, the, if, the, the, if the mayor run, runs the meeting, if there's someone there who wants to speak specifically on an item, you know, it's usually, it's within his discretion to. Okay, all right. I will, I will encourage. I can't promise that, but I, to, yeah, that would be. To do that. Yeah. Because, you know, without that, they won't, you know, the idea needs to be explained. You know, yes. it, needs to, it definitely about. needs to be explained. And, and there needs to be pictures as well. Yeah. Yeah, good, good, good. This, is, right. this is terrific. It's great. So Thank you'll you. let us know, Lou. Well, do we have to vote on that, that we want that? Or we are we in agreement that? Well, Dan says it's already on the agenda, right? So it's only an item on the agenda called tweaks to the Army Corps plan. So maybe right. Tony had done that, Kate. Yeah. So so Tony okay. and Kate, make sure you're there. That's all. And, and you okay. know, and raise your hands and uh, uh, and and 
and, okay. and we'll, 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 you know. Okay, we'll... I'll, I'll communicate with Tony because he's left the meeting, but so that's okay. at, five at five o'clock on Monday night, right? Five o'clock. Okay. All the good stuff happens at the work session. <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to run through a few things because it's after nine. Um, I know we got started late, but um, all the all the clean energy communities and climate smart communities, I'm not going to do those updates now. I will send out a memo um, letting sort of members of that committee know where we are. And I will try to have a separate meeting set up. Um, I haven't done that sort of purposely because I feel like there's just so much going on with the village. And um, I just didn't think it was necessary to do that until we have something tangible to really talk about. Um, but I feel like um, where I am now is I see a path to becoming a bronze um, certified community by January, but there's a lot of things that have to happen between now and then. So um, I'll report back more on that and try to get a meeting set up. Great. And then I just want to um, give an update on the food scrap recycling program. So the pilot was successful and the program will be ongoing, which is fabulous news. Um, there was a goal to reach 300 households by June 1st. We fell short of that. Um, we were at 278. Um, I don't know where we are at this very minute, but probably close to that number. Um, but that's that's great. I mean, you know, in ASAP Scraps was doing this, they had 100 households. So we really showed that there was, you know, a bigger audience for this. And I think that it still amazes me that there are some people like, will say, I don't, I didn't know about that. <laughs> so I think that, that we still need to sort of get this messaging out. What does um, the volumes look like? Is it increasing? I haven't seen the volume from May, and I think that will be really interesting to see May. April um, and March were pretty, you know, pretty um, in the ballpark of where it's been. Yep. I would have expected a bigger jump up, but no. Um, I do think that, um, Dan, I know I've talked about this with Jerry and Robert. Um, we really need new signage around the, around the village. The signage that we have is old. And it does not indicate that there's a pickup service. And I think that, again, just trying to get the word out. Some people are more visual when they're driving or walking by and they see these signs. Um, it'll trigger kind of a thought process. Some people just don't. I mean, David puts out, I'm sorry, Robert puts out amazing emails every week, but some people just don't spend the time to go through that. Some people aren't even subscribed to the email. Some people aren't even subscribed to it. So many people are, I know. <laughs> are, are you thinking, are you talking about um, like the, the, the banners that we put up in various locations or signage as in permanent signage? Uh, I'm talking about the signs that we have by the post office. Oh, okay, okay, so the banners, yeah. The banners, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Those, they, they need to be updated. Okay. Um, we've been talking about that for a while. So they have um, files um, from Scarsdale. So we just need to change the word, you know, Mamarinic from Scarsdale. <laughs> We're good to go. <laughs> So um, I don't know why that hasn't happened yet, but that should be a sort of an easy thing. And, and then I guess, Dan, maybe you can comment on this. Um, we identified a food scrap grant from the DEC. That would be amazing to get. Um, the grant could be used for equipment, which we do need. Um, it could be used to buy tons of bins and maybe even give them out to residents. Um, and I think that we would really be a good qualifier for the grant because there is um, verbiage that they tend to want to give grants to um, villages with popular, you know, low-income populations and so forth. So I, I'm hoping that Allie is working on that because I think it'd be really um, beneficial to get that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her about that. Okay, great, great, great. Um, so, oh, and one last thing, I'm sorry, I know I'm just jumping around all night. Um, I do want to just announce that um, the large font amount a uh, large bomb marinator pollinator pathway garden tour is on June 26th uh, from one to five. And I highly recommend that. I did it last year. I only got to see three homes out of like, I think there were like 20 something, but it was so inspiring. And um, yeah, I really highly recommend people take this a couple Sunday. Hours. Yeah, take a couple of hours out of your day and do that. This Sunday. So there is a map um, of all the houses 
but I have not seen that map yet, Mandy. So no, it didn't go on their website. I don't know much about how they're doing it. It said a few days before. I'm assuming maybe tomorrow or the next day they'll okay, put it so out. Okay, so when I get hold of the map, I'll send it out to the committee or Mandy if you see yeah, it before. When I find it. But as I said, I think, you know, especially because we're talking so much about natives, it, it's really that was sort of my aha moment to seeing how natives are being used in people's own yards. You know, just on, some yards we saw were huge, some were on a smaller scale. And um, it was just, it was really, it was inspiring. It was really nice to see that. And there is an open invitation to my yard if anyone wants to come see it. Are you on the tour? <laughs> No, I'm, I, it's too much pressure for me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They want you to label things. Uh, I'm busy. <laughs> so I fell in love. We'll come by to see your butterfly plant. I fell in love with one yard so much that I actually had an event in this woman's yard for another organization. <laughs> I, That's fun. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, anyway, I'm sorry for the having to rush through, but tonight's meeting was very strange. Um, Anyone else before we sign off here? You know, oh, sorry, David, you go ahead. I didn't have anything. Are we having a meeting next month? Do you want to have a meeting next month? I'm just asking. Oh, um, I was, well, I personally, um, wait one second. That meeting is. It's on the calendar. Yeah. It's on the calendar. I and mean, I'm, I'm able to have that meeting. I mean, I feel like we have so much going on. Um, usually we take August off, not July. So it'll be the 19th of July? Yeah. Usually we yeah, take I'm, a hiatus in August, but not I'm July. Around, I'm around in July 19th. How is everybody else? I'm not here. You're not here? And, and Christy, you may not be here? I'm not physically here, but remotely I could be available. Okay. I can try. So, it'll be one in the morning. <laughs> oh, you don't have to do that. Don't do that. <laughs> you need a quorum. No. <laughs> it depends on the topic. Well, you, learn what, a is. Is. Yeah. you learn what a quorum is now. Well, um, if, I if, would if, like to throw in just a U.S. anything else. I just I want to throw this out as a as just a general you know seeding essentially. And I know it's like I would love for our committee to consider not just this parking lot is valuable, and I love the fact that we're going to now get a chance. Kate's now going to get a chance to make it, take it up a level. I think that the entire project from the Corps of Engineers, I would love for the environmental committee to have the ability to have some say so, some input, some suggestions, some ability to make recommendations along the way, especially after the physical fact, because we're not obviously going to tell them how to do their engineering unless you have good ideas, but as a, as a, how would we like our village to be returned? I'd like to keep this door wide open for continued conversations as to how we can help work with the village and the Army Corps to return the village and actually improve the village once it's over. While you have the floor, <clears throat> Monday, bring that up, please. Kate, I have to toss it to you. I won't be here. Okay. It's in your heart. You know it. <laughs> yeah, so, so the I mean, the Army Corps asserts in their documents that they will replant every, you know, everything that's been removed, because they're going to remove a lot of vegetation, they're going to replant with native species. So it's really just for us to be, you know, to have, you know, to be able to make suggestions along those lines. Yes. I think, I think let's just stay in the advisory level. And if we can continue to help throw information and suggestions, all the best. But I just think let's keep the doors open. Yeah, and, and you you might not want it exactly the way it was. You may want it a little different. Better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've we've had that with a FEMA. Uh, there's one bridge that they want to put that we, they have we have money to put it back the way it was because it was damaged. And we said we don't want that. They said, well, that's what the grant grant is. So they're trying to work it out, you know, to to give us something different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so I missed the entire Army Corps discussion, but I did listen to some of the presentations and I thought the one thing that was missing was any visuals. They are not showing us what it's going to look like mm -hmm. afterwards. And I think, right. I don't know whether that was intentional mm -hmm. or a mistake, but it's going to be really important for us to know what this is going to look like right. after it's done. And we, I don't think any of us have any idea. It's still designing it to tell you the truth. I mean, it's, 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 it's build design. 
So uh, they're, they're doing it piece by piece. Uh, I think if the environmental uh, committee could come up with a top tier, like um, A, we would like public access, B, we would like native plants, C, we would like it to be a safe environment for animals and people, educational purposes. Like, I could think if we could come up with a, like, please apply this to all Indian projects and then we can look at it on a case by case basis. But, you know, for people to be able to appreciate the river, for it to be safe, for it to be clean, and for it to be free of invasives and full of native pollinators, that's pretty much what we want. If I can just interject, David. Um, so originally, um, you know, what, the, what, what came out at the flood committee, this is a month or so ago, was that the Army Corps had met with, I think, Tom and, and Jerry, and they were going to have um, invite the invite the community to meet to to a, to a public hearing in August. And in August, they would be sixty percent through with their design process. So that was what they. Then I don't know, I don't know what what happened behind the scenes. Maybe they heard there was a lot of flack, a lot of uproar, a lot of upset. But they suddenly, very on very short order, moved it from August to May. So what that means is that they're actually not that far into the design process. Um, they really only started in February, as I understand. So they don't actually have visuals to show us, really. It's all very conceptual, though you can, you know, look at it. Have you seen the 2017 document? There is stuff in there. You can look at that. Um, yeah, well, but, um, I'm, I'm, I'm a little suspicious. Yeah, I, I just want to address. I just want to address Christy's point that um, I met with Tony Gelber, who was on the call earlier, who heads the Flood Mitigation Committee, and he and I talked about sort of partnering to be more sort of on the river restoration side. Mm -hmm. So you know, and exactly your point, Christy, caring about you know getting the invasives out, planting the native, like having more of a caring about the nature of what this project is going to be about. So I think that we're going to have a good partnership with the with the flood committee. Mm -hmm. And I think we will be paying attention step by step. But yeah. there, you know, the, to me, the Army Corps of Engineer, it is a construction project. Yeah, it, it, there's there's going to be thing. elements of this thing that are going to probably uh, look pretty unpleasant to um, yeah. to some of us. Uh, yeah, but, so, uh, as to Christie's Christie's point about the public yeah. access, that, that's been brought up in the past. The Army Corps considers that that's a betterment to the project. So that will be the village's cost if, if that's yeah. something that was to be incorporated. That's not going to be part of the Army Corps, uh, on the Army Corps, uh, uh, their dime. Even though Phillips Park is a park and uh, Tompkins Bridge is a bridge, I didn't know Tompkins Bridge is not on it, but on... on... Again, anything that is, anything they disturb, they will restore. But if there are, if there's, uh, you know, pu increased public access, that's not something that is going to be part of their design because that's not, that's a better part of the flood, a flood risk reduction. Process. What if that, what if that, do. what if that public access were to be prior to the demolition? Then the village would have to pay for it first, then they'd have to, but again, it's all, remember, all the was $88 million. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, we should try to keep that in mind as well. And I don't think we would be able to construct the type of public access that, you know, what has been envisioned, which is kind of like a river walk is from what I've heard over the past several years. I mean, that, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a major project that would take several years to design and implement. Yeah, I know, but in Phillips Park, there already is one. It's just yeah, informal. I mean, I mean, in Ward Park, there's already one. It's just informal. And so I guess what the what is the definition of re restoring it? Is it based on the village's formality or is it based on actual usage? Because actual usage, there's getting a lot of use in again, both if, Ward and Phillips. Again, if, if, if they're, if the park, they're not going to enhance the public access. Is that, it, it, they will maintain what's there already. So if there's informal usage, if there's informal paths, which are, you can walk there now, we can document it. Would they restore is, that? Is it an or informal path, just like people where people have, uh, you know, tread along? Repeatedly to the point where, yeah, where there's no growth because the people use it. It's public, 
usage. But, and, 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 but, 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 but aren't we aren't we getting off on the wrong yeah, foot that, here? I, what yeah, we should I, figure what we should figure out is what we want. Well, we want. Then we can back. figure out who pays for it. I don't think we should start by saying we can't do that because the Army Corps won't pay for it. Well, I think what we're trying to do is find little pockets of opportunity, which is if if it's already designated a park and it already has public access points in the sense that there are pathways through public parks, whether or not they're maintained by the village, can they be restored as a public access? I, I, I don't think, well, that's a, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I think the Army Corps' position is going to be it's you know we, we're not we're going to restore the property we're not going to formalize an informal you know pathway even if it's a formal park because phillips and ward are a, well no you know a park is a park they'll restore the land but you know they're not going to formalize something that that's not formal but, so before it's demolished we should document it then yeah yeah i mean it, it the parts of that river are going to look different yeah it's just you can think when we have a lot of water to move out I mean, it's 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 a it's a big it's a big deal. I mean, it's it's gonna. I, I keep telling people it's gonna be like a double knee replacement. So we should, <laughs> we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't uh, delude ourselves into in, in, into thinking it's anything less. Okay. I will, right. I will okay. keep everyone. Thank you. The ones that have been on since seven, I I need to. Uh, okay. Thank you. Um. Anyway, I'll um ask for a motion to close the meeting tonight. Motion to close. <laughs> Okay. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.